Good morning, Team Alabama. Please join me in reading in the Hunger Games in chapter 24, page 320. It takes a while to explain the situation to PETA, how Foxface stole the food from the supply pile before I blew it up, and how she tried to take enough to stay alive, but not enough that anyone would notice, and how she wouldn't question the safety of berries that we were preparing to eat ourselves. I wonder how she found us, says PETA. My fault, I guess, if I'm as loud as you say. We were about as hard to follow as a herd of cattle, but I tried to be kind. And she's very clever, Peta. Well, she was, until you outfoxed her. Not on purpose. Doesn't seem fair, somehow, I mean. We would have both been dead, too, if she hadn't eaten the berries first. He checks himself. No, of course, we wouldn't. You recognized them, didn't you? I give a nod. We call them Nightlock. Even the name sounds deadly, he says. I'm sorry, Katniss. I really thought they were the same ones that you'd gathered. Don't apologize. It just means that we're one step closer to home, right? I ask. I'll get rid of the rest, Peter says. He gathers up the sheet of blue plastic, careful to trap the berries inside, and goes to toss them into the woods. Wait, I cry. I find the leather pouch that belonged to the boy from District 1 and fill it with a few handfuls of berries from the plastic. If they fooled Foxface, maybe they can fool Cato as well. If he's chasing us or something, we can act like a, we accidentally dropped a pouch, and if he eats them... Then hello, District 12, says PETA. That's it, I say, securing the pouch to my belt. He'll know the, where we are now, says PETA. If he was anywhere nearby and saw the hovercraft, he'll know that we killed her and come after us. PETA's right. This could be just the opportunity Cato's been waiting for, but even if we run now, there's the meat to cook and our fire will be another sign of our whereabouts. Let's make a fire right now. I begin to gather branches and brush. Are you ready to face him, Peta asks. I'm ready to eat. Better to cook our food while we have the chance. If he knows that we're here, he knows, but he also knows there's two of us and probably assumes that we were hunting Foxface. That means you're recovered. And the fire means we're not hiding. We're inviting him here. Would you show up, I ask? Maybe not, he says. Pete is a whiz with fires, coaxing a blaze out of the damp wood, and in no time I have the rabbits and squirrel roasting and roots wrapped in leaves baking in the coals. We take turns gathering greens and keeping a careful watch for Cato, but as I anticipated, he doesn't make an appearance. When the food's cooked, I pack most of it up, leaving us each a rabbit's leg to eat as we walk. I want to move higher into the woods, climb a good tree, and make camp for the night, but Peter resists. I can't climb like you, Katniss, especially with my leg, and I don't think I could ever fall asleep 50 feet above the ground. It's not stay safe to stay in the open, Peter, I say. Can't we go back to the cave, he asks. It's near the water and easy to defend, I sigh. Several more hours of walking, or should I say crashing, through the woods to reach an area we'll just have to leave in the morning to hunt. But Peter doesn't ask for much. He's allowed my instructions all day, or he's followed, sorry, my instructions all day, and I'm sure if things were reversed, he wouldn't make me spend the night in a tree. It dawns on me that I haven't been very nice to Peter today, nagging him about how loud he was, screaming at him over disappearing. The playful romance he, we had sustained in the cave has disappeared out in the open under this hot sun, and with the threat of Cato looming over us, Haymitch has probably just about had it with me. And as for the audience, I reach up and give him a kiss. Sure, let's go back to the cave. He looks pleased and relieved. Well, that was easy. I work my arrow out of the oak, careful not to damage the shaft. These arrows are food, safety, and life itself now. We toss a bunch more wood on the fire, and it should be sending off smoke for a few more hours, although I doubt Cato assumes anything at this point. When we reach the stream, I see the water has dropped considerably and moves at its old leisurely plate pace. So I suggest that we walk back in it, and Pete is happy to oblige, and since he's a lot quieter in the water than on land, it's a doubly good idea. It's a long walk back to the cave, though, even going downward, even with the rabbit to give us a boost. We're both exhausted by our hike today and still way too underfed. I keep my bow indeed, or loaded, 
sorry, I keep my bow loaded, both for Cato and any fish that I might see, but the stream seems strangely empty of creatures. By the time we reach our destination, our feet are dragging and the sun sits low on the horizon. We fill up our water bottles and climb the low slope to our den. It's not much, but out here in the wilderness, it's the closest thing we have to a home. It will be warmer than a tree, too, because it provides some shelter from the wind that has begun to blow steadily in from the west. I set a good dinner out, but halfway through, Peta begins to nod off. After days of inactivity, the hunt has taken its toll. I order him into the sleeping bag and set in aside the rest of the food for when he wakes. He drops off immediately. I pull the sleeping bag up to his chin and kiss his forehead. Not for the audience, but for me, because I'm so grateful that he's still here, not dead by the stream as I'd thought. So glad that I don't have to face Cato alone. Brutal, bloody Cato, who can snap a neck with a twist of his arm, who had the power to overcome Thresh, who has had it out for me since the beginning, has probably, he probably has had a special hatred for me ever since I outscored him in training. A boy like Peta would simply shrug that off. But I have a feeling it drove Cato to distraction, which is not that hard. I think of his ridiculous reaction to finding the supplies blown up. The others were upset, of course, but he was completely unhinged. I wonder how now if Cato might be entirely sane. Okay, we're going to stop there for today. Please go ahead and add to your facts and have a great rest of your day, Team Alabama.